What is protein? Protein is a class of organic compounds amino acids. There are 20 of them, nine of which are essential. Now, what are the function of these amino acids? Well, they are the structural components of your body's tissues. So connective tissues and muscles, as well as hair, skin, nails. They also create enzymes and antibodies as well. So very, very important for your immune system. Most common sources of protein, meat, eggs, poultry, fish, dairy. And then we get into the plant-based sources. So beans, tofu, quinoa, soy, mycoprotein like corn, as well as whole grains, fruits, and veg to a lesser extent. Going back to what we were talking about, there's 20 amino acids, nine of which are essential, so your body cannot create them itself. This is an issue we commonly see with vegan or plant-based eaters. The reason being is because a lot of plant protein sources do not contain all nine essential amino acids. So if you are plant-based, it's very important that you're mixing your protein sources with each meal. When it comes to protein, what is the most important thing you need to check off every day? It's your daily protein intake. So you have been given a recommendation probably between 1.6 grams to two grams per kilo of your lean body weight. So if you're 100 kilos lean, we're looking at around 160, 200 grams. That is the most important thing for you to be taking off before we start to work up the chain. From there, we're looking at protein feedings per day. Ideally, you're getting three to five high protein feedings per day. And that is for a few reasons. Protein is super satiated, it keeps you very, very full. So making sure you're getting protein with each meal is a great way for you to not overeat. Also, your body will have about four to five opportunities throughout the day to actually lay down some quality muscle tissue. So having amino acids in the bloodstream is very important for that process. Next up the list, we have protein quality. So protein quality does matter. For those of you who eat meat and dairy, it's not so much of an issue because most of these foods are complete protein sources. For those of you that are plant-based, you do have to be a little bit more careful in making sure you're mix matching protein sources with each meal. How much protein do you need a day? So the recommended daily allowance is 0.8 grams per kilo of body weight. Now this is not, I'm going to be in optimal health. This is the minimum amount required to avoid deficiency or sickness. So we're not looking for that, we can definitely do better. General population is 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kilo of body weight. Endurance athlete being 1.2 to 1.7 grams per kilo of body weight. And if you are trying to hold on to or gain some lean muscle tissue, 1.6 to 2.2 grams has commonly been shown in research over the last 20, 30 years to be the most beneficial recommendation for you to hold on to lean muscle tissue and or gain lean muscle tissue if you want to do so. Protein is not just for big muscles. It's very, very important for your immune function. It's very important to hold on to muscle tissue as we start to tip on into our older years. And if you have recently become sick, you're bed bound, you broke your leg, maybe you've had COVID, when you're lying up, it's very easy for you to start losing muscle mass. Consuming more protein on a daily basis is one of the best things you can do to speed up recovery, stop yourself from losing muscle mass, speed up wound healing times, and for you to still function at your best. There is a big misconception around dairy, and I think the Netflix documentary Game Changers has made it even worse. You have to know the overarching evidence suggests that dairy is absolutely fantastic for your health. Dairy consumption has been associated with lower insulin resistance, lower rates of diabetes, lower risk of heart attack, stroke, cardiovascular death, and overall systemic inflammation. So you don't have to worry about the overconsumption of dairy. It is very, very good for your health. It's full of calcium, vitamin D, and protein, which we know is all very important for you to function at your best. Regardless if you're trying to put on muscle mass, lose body fat, or feel your best, why do we try to increase your protein intake? Well, it's because protein is super satiating. When you eat a big protein meal, you feel very, very full. As we can see in all three studies here, protein is by far the most filling macronutrient between protein, fats, and carbs almost twice as filling as carbohydrates or fats. So we can see that we have increased satiety after one meal, increased satiety after 24 hours, and lower spontaneous energy intake. So that means going into the cupboards, picking at the biscuits or crisps. When you have a higher protein intake, you're a lot less likely to overindulge because of hunger levels. High protein diets have consistently been shown to be better for weight loss. We can see greater weight loss, fat loss, and muscle retention. You have greater weight loss and improvements in your HbA1c levels, which is your average blood sugar levels over the course of three months. And we can see for those who have higher protein diets in weight loss studies, lower BMI, lower waist circumference, lower blood pressure, lower fasting insulin, and triglyceride reduction. So all very important things for your health status. While dieting, higher protein diets help you retain muscle mass, which is very, very important because to improve your physique, we don't want to just become a smaller version of you. We want to hold on to all of that lean muscle mass as you're losing weight. Muscle mass is quite calorie demanding. We can have two examples here. You right now as you are, and you having dieted down but lost five kilos of muscle mass. The version of you who is sitting at the desk for eight hours a day, 
working with that extra four or five kilos of lean muscle mass is going to burn more calories at rest, just sitting on your arse. And the version of you who has lost the muscle mass is now going to be burning less calories at rest. So in terms of managing your body weight, it's important to be calorie demanding. If you are sitting around on your arse all day and your body still needs 2,000 calories, 2,500 calories, 3,000 calories, just to undergo all of its daily tasks, you're going to be in a much better position to stay within a healthy BMI, or at least lower levels of body fat. However, in studies we can see if you are very overweight, when you're losing weight, your body is not going to start digging into your muscle mass and using that as a fuel source. You have plenty of fuel for your body to use, stored body fat, so you are far less likely to start actually breaking down muscle tissue. The leaner you become, the more likely it is that your body says, well, do you know what? I need fuel from somewhere. I might just start digging into this muscle mass. The two things that are going to stop that are an optimal protein intake on a daily basis and resistance training. In this study, we can see there are three groups. Group one has 0.8 grams of protein per kilo of lean body weight per day. Group two is 1.6 grams, and group three is 2.4 grams per kilo of lean body weight. After a 21 day diet on a 40% energy deficit, we can see that the group that had a lower protein intake actually lost some muscle mass, 58% and 42% fat mass. In the higher protein groups, we can see that they lost the 30% muscle mass and then 36% muscle mass and a hell of a lot more fat mass. So that is important to note. That's why we harp on about protein. It's super important for you to improve your body composition, not only from a vanity perspective, but for you to hold on to that lean tissue that makes you strong, healthy, and so forth. A lot of people struggle to hit their daily protein requirements. If you have come from eating 30, 40, 50 grams of protein per day, it might be a little bit of a shock to the system that we want you eating double or triple that amount. The first few things I recommend you put into place are as follows. Make sure you are getting a big bolus dose of protein in in the morning. Create a high protein breakfast resource for yourself if you have not been given one already. Greek yogurt is amazing. Eggs are amazing. Whey protein powder is amazing. You can have meat in the morning if you so wish. There are lots of things you can put into. And if you're really, really struggling, make sure you reach out to your coach because we will help set up this plan for you. Get yourself a pile of high protein snacks. Protein yogurts, protein mousses, protein bars, protein powder. There is lots of different things that you can have on hand to make sure you're bumping your protein intake up. Milk is a fantastic one, tuna is a fantastic one, even a sandwich at lunchtime making sure you're putting double the amount of meat is a great way of ensuring you're getting a good bolus dose of protein on board. And lastly, have a large portion of protein at each and every meal. So breakfast, lunch, dinner, making sure you're getting a big bolus dose, minimum 20 grams, up towards 40 or 50 grams. Once you have that set, all you have to do is stick to it. You know what you're going to be having tomorrow, you know what you're going to have the day after that. These are a couple of things you can put into place. Now I do understand some people get caught out, I have to go to the shop, and I just can get a sandwich. Sandwich and a protein bar is gonna be 45 grams of protein. If you don't like protein bars, you can get protein milk. That's another 30 grams. Your sandwich would be around 20, 25 grams of protein if it has meat in it. So you're at around 40 or 50 grams in that meal. So there's lots of different options you can go for in the shop. And that's all we need to know about protein. If you are plant-based and you're struggling to mix and match your protein sources to make sure you're getting a broad spectrum of amino acids into your meal together, reach out to myself or another member of the team and we'll help you right away. Otherwise, 